Hey everyone, this is a drone that I have really, really enjoyed, but unfortunately I can't fly this one right now because the flight controller died on me. That is pretty frustrating, but I'm going to fix it, and while I'm doing that, I figured I might as well run the camera and show you guys what I'm doing, because the exact reason why this failed uh, is a very common source of failure, probably the most common source of failure on flight controllers. And I'm not just talking about Whoop flight controllers, I've had exactly the same problem on pretty much every size, even the 30 by 30 uh, flight controllers I use for 5 inch racing drones. Uh, it's super common, and that problem is a dead 5 volt regulator. I knew it was the problem on this one the instant I plugged in and heard this sound. Just three beeps. There should be two more. Dee dee. And that would indicate that the ESC is getting a signal from the flight controller, but it's not because the flight controller isn't getting powered by that 5 volt regulator. Uh, that is pretty frustrating, but fortunately you can fix it and all you have to do is provide 5 volts onto that line uh, through another source. So I'll show you how to do that. Let's go. All right, as you can see, I've already taken the camera, VTX, and LEDs off of this board. It was just really cluttered in here, and I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So to fix this board, it ought to be possible to find these surface-mounted components that are faulty and actually replace them on the board. That would be sweet, but I've never actually done that. I'm going to do the thing that is way easier, which is to add an external 5-volt buck converter to provide power to the board. But before we do that, let's talk about diagnosing the problem, because you've got to know what the problem is before you can fix it. So why do I know that the 5-volt regulator on this board is dead? Like I said, I got my first clue when I plugged it in and I only heard those three beeps. You can also see that there's no lights on the board at all, and there should be. Uh, but there's no lights. If the VTX was on here, it would be completely out. The LEDs were out. It's as if there's no power, but we know the battery is connected. But if we plug in USB, then you can see it does light up. And that's because USB provides 5 volts onto the 5 volt line on the flight controller, just like the regulator is supposed to, but this does work. That's why you can plug in a flight controller into Betaflight when nothing else is connected to it and set it up that way. You're powering it from the USB. And just to be sure, we can also test it with a multimeter. You can see I've already got the battery plugged in here, so first let me test the VBAT pads. See, I'm getting about 8.4 volts. That's because this is a fully charged 2S battery. And this flight controller only has one 5 volt pad on it. Uh, that's kind of unfortunate. I think the newer boards like this have two pads, but this one has one and it's the second one from the left. So let's see what voltage is there. So I'm testing ground and that 5 volt pad, and I'm getting just over one volt. Interesting that I don't get zero volts, but that's actually pretty common. When I see these 5 volt regulators go out, it often doesn't go all the way to zero, but it's clearly not enough to power the flight controller. And that is where our buck converter comes in. This takes battery voltage on the bottom, and then out the top we just get 5 volts. These I got in a bag of four from Amazon. They happen to be made by Wolf Whoop, but uh, you might be able to find these somewhere else. They don't have to be specifically designed for drones, but you do want them to be as small as possible, and you want to check the specs. These take six volts on the low end, all the way up to, I think, 24 volts on the high end, so lots of headroom here, and then it runs 1.5 amps continuous current, which should be more than enough for all of our accessories. Now, of course, before you trim any of the wires, you'll want to figure out how it's going to run in your build. In my case, I'm going to connect it to VBAT uh, to power in this side with the red JST, but I think I'm going to put the buck converter under the flight controller with the power coming up on the other side because there's plenty of room under there. So what you do there is going to depend on your build. All right, so I've got the connectors cut off. This is the input side. This is the output. And you can see I actually cut the black wire completely off. I've got it right here, but you don't actually need that black wire. If you tested it with a multimeter, you would see that it's just passed through from this one. And so all we actually need is one line. I cut off the black one immediately just so I wouldn't mix up which side was which. Now that we've got the connectors off, let's get the weight. This is going to add about 0.8 grams to my build, so the weight is a little bit of a drawback. And there may be other drawbacks as well in terms of electrical performance. I am not an expert on that, but we're talking about a flight controller that didn't fly at all, so I think we're going to be able to get it back in the air with this fix. All right, let's get it soldered on. Actually, before I attach this last wire, let's just verify we're getting the voltage we think we are. There it is, 5 volts. I'll run this under the flight controller in a minute, but first I've just got it wired to that 5 volt pad so we can do a little test. And for my battery, I've got the smoke stopper on here just in case. There we go. Now it's beeping because my receiver's not on. You can see the lights on underneath. Everything's working. 
All that remains now is to put the camera and VTX back on. I'll do that off camera, but first I want to mention one thing. This still only has one 5 volt pad, but I'm going to need something to wire my VTX to, and if I was running the LEDs, I would need that too. I think I'm going to leave the LEDs off this time, but I've still got to power the VTX. Now, one option would be to attach two wires to that one solder point, kind of like this. Sometimes people do that, but look how close these uh, pads are. There's very little space, and I'd be worried about one kind of hitting one of the other ones, especially with the 5 volt line. I wouldn't want it to short out. So what I'm going to do instead is attach a small red wire to this so that there's only one wire on the board, and then I'll join my wires up in the air with a bit of heat shrink. All done. Once I get the canopy on there, this guy should be ready to fly. That 5 volt regulator is underneath, but you can see these red wires here. That's the junction I was telling you about. One goes to the VTX, one goes down to that pad, and the other goes to the 5 volt regulator. You can see I also swapped out the camera. This is a Cadex Ant. I had an EOS 2 on there before, so this one should be lighter and a lot nicer. That'll be a nice upgrade. I also decided not to use the LEDs this time. I only use these for racing, and we haven't had any races in a while because of the pandemic. So I'm going to keep this off for now to save a little bit of weight. And again, those things will help make up for the weight that I added with that buck converter. I also decided not to use an extra capacitor this time. Some of my builds have this and some of them don't. It's a 150 nanofarad 10 volt capacitor. And the idea with using this is that it absorbs some of those current spikes. But the whole reason I had it on this build was to prevent the 5 volt regulator from burning out when I plug in that battery. And it obviously didn't protect it. So I decided to actually take it off. And instead I'm gonna rely on that buck converter. Uh, it's rated for up to 24 volts way more than I'm putting on this thing, and I think it's just going to be a lot more rugged anyway, so I don't think I'm going to be burning that one out with or without this capacitor, so I also decided to leave that out. On some builds, it's definitely a good idea though. Quick disclaimer, this fix may not work 100% of the time. It worked in this case, and I've done it successfully several times, but just the other day I was trying to fix this flight controller, and it also has a dead 5 volt regulator, but it died in a rather unusual way. It must have shorted out or something because it allows current to go from the 5 volt line to the VBAT line. So if you plug in USB, you can actually hear the motors start beeping even without a battery. That's kind of crazy. That shouldn't be happening. And in the end, I was not able to save this flight controller. So hopefully this fix works for you. If it gets you back in the air, then that's awesome. Uh, just be careful. You know, check everything for shorts with your multimeter. Uh, use a smoke stopper when you plug in and also be on the lookout for heat. The flight controller in this drone that had the problem was a Beta FPV 2S all-in-one flight controller, um, but the problem we're talking about is definitely not unique to Beta FPV. I've seen this happen several times on several different brands, and I talk to people online who have this problem a lot. That's part of why I wanted to make this video. And the first time I experienced this was actually on 5-inch drones. I was getting ready for the 2018 Multi-GP Regional Finals, and that was going to be my first big event like that. I was super excited, but I only had two 5-inch drones that were race-worthy, and this was one of them. Um, and so I was really concerned that a wreck or something would take out my equipment and I wouldn't be able to finish the race. Um, I knew I'd be up against pilots way faster than me. That's cool. I just wanted to be able to do my best and not be held back by my equipment. And in the weeks leading up to it, I actually had two of these flight controllers die uh, because of the 5 volt regulator, one after the other. In the first one, I replaced the flight controller. The second one, I fixed by tapping a 5 volt line into an LED pad, uh, very similar to what I just showed you today. And so as I was thinking about race day, how how do I prepare? Um, how do I fix things in the field? I preemptively took a 5 volt line from the ESC down here. It fortunately has a 5 volt output. And you can see what I did. I taped it right up here. That way, if the 5 volt regulator died on this board, then I would be able to really quickly fix it in the field by just soldering that down onto a 5 volt pad. Fortunately, that didn't actually happen, and this board is still flying just fine, but that was something that I was concerned about. I shared that story just to show that 5-volt regulators going out is kind of a big problem, and it has been for a while. So if you're listening to this and you work for a company that makes flight controllers, please, please, please find a way to make those 5-volt regulators more reliable. Well, this drone is all ready to go. I'll give it a good test flight uh, when I can, and then I'll stick some of that footage at the end of this video if you're interested. Um, I'm really excited about getting this drone back in the air because I really, really like this thing. If you haven't seen this basic design before, it's the one that I nicknamed the Shutterbug 85. I've built a bunch of these uh, with different variations, but the motors and props and everything have kind of remained the same. It's just super fun, uh, good for racing, good for bashing around. I am a better pilot because of flying these things and just 
not having to worry at all, which is why this has this heavy TPU canopy on it as well. It's completely indestructible, and the high up tilt on this camera mount allows me to do some really crazy tricks. I used this drone for a lot of the entries in iGAO, the international game of Whoop, uh, last season, and now iGAO 2 is starting up. I'm going to be a judge. It's going to be pretty sweet. Check that out if you haven't already. If you're curious, the dry weight is now 44.3 grams. So that's nowhere near the lightest that I've built, but it's actually pretty good considering this camera and this TPU canopy and the fact that it's got that extra buck converter in there. This is gonna fly really well. I'm looking forward to this. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this has been interesting and helpful for you. That's the whole reason why I make these videos in my free time. Uh, I just love FPV and I'm happy to explain things to the community. I find that whenever I do that, I always learn things as well. So I'm loving it. I hope you're enjoying this as well. Uh, if you have any questions, Let's talk down in the comments below, and otherwise, I'll see you next time.